now see it person to person a weekly document for television as told by the faces and Have you seen Kurt and Courtney? Yeah. That's, that was shot here. Yeah, that's what I was referring yeah. to with the uh, comment about the, uh, you know, minor motion pictures. Oh, let's see. All minor motion picture directors beat a pass to your door, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So you're making a movie? It's a TV series. It's, uh, you know, this is like episode 450 or so. And it's a, is it a public access thing? Yeah. Or? Okay. So I saw your card, KCAT, KCET, right? Then... No, it's King County Public Access. Oh, okay. Something like that. But, uh... So is this the, the legendary practice space? Right, is this, uh, this is it. Those are El Duce's drums right there. Oh, in the back. Oh, these yeah. are the porno drums. Is that right. what they're called? The porno kit, yeah. That's the legendary last beer of El Duce right there. See that? The legendary last beer. That's... As best I can determine, the last beer he drank. Huh. Right there. That's why it says the last beer of El Duce. Well, you know, that wasn't found by the uh, uh, the uh, side of the railroad tracks, though. No, but I don't have any reason to believe he was actually drinking a beer on the railroad tracks. It's possible, but this was left on the barbecue out there when he went to get the store to uh, get some, some barbecue fixings and... Uh, that was capped. There was actually two of them left. That last day he was alive, he bought a 16 pack of 32 ounce cane cobras. And that one was half open sitting over there. He drank in the rest of them. He thoroughly consumed the rest, and then he left this one full. Just still full. So that becomes a backup in terms of the uh, last beer of El Duce. Now, this actually probably contains some of his DNA, somehow or the other. So in the future, Science may be able to clone El Duce because of the fact that there's DNA in there, as, as long as hopefully the alcohol hasn't altered it irreparably. Well, he seems to have been rather impervious to that. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever met El Duce? I see. I got you. So, um. You have to see already. Okay. Yeah. Is that a digital thing or what? Is no, it's high eight. Just high eight. That's what that is. It's high eight. So uh, the uh, legendary porno drum kit—that's uh, a creation of uh, LDJ. Correct. He put all that porno on that kit. In fact, we were just jamming on it. Maybe you heard when you came up. We were, uh, my 
compadre over here. I, I took Al's place. Yeah, he's the new drummer of the mentors, this guy over here. So he, we, he's only allowed to play on the holy set of El Duce when we... That's part of the deal. That way he can channel whatever residual psychic energy is there into his feet and his hands to affect it, the rock. So will the El Duce uh, drum set uh, be on stage again? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys actually, I saw a flyer for your uh, memorial to uh, El Duce and uh, obviously you played the memorial as the mentors, so the mentors continue. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure which flyer or show you're referring to, but yes, the mentors do continue. In fact, I was just on the telephone this morning with Sicky Wife Beater, who's um, getting back in a rock action at the moment. Um, he was temporarily out of action due to some uh, legal issues. Mm -hmm. And now, Steve, your pseudonym in the band is? Dr. Heathen Scum. Dr. Heathen Scum. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is this Kill Allen Wrench business? Well, this is a group that um, I play guitar in uh, with a Riverside native, uh, Kill Allen Wrench, who used to be in a band called uh, Road Whore out here. And uh, he's now leading this group, Kill Allen Wrench, uh, which is a uh, heavy metal punk group, five piece group. Um, that type of thing. And now, but the the Kill Allen Wrench uh, uh, website, yes, seems to imply that the reason that people should kill Allen Wrench <laughs> yes. is that he killed Kurt Cobain and possibly uh, your friend Al Duce. Okay. So yes. Do you have any knowledge <laughs> that he killed either of these people? <laughs> um, I have no direct. Uh, anything I would know would be hearsay evidence, <laughs> so to speak. Well, uh, this isn't a court of law. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I'm not Obviously, I want to be careful with what I say. All I can tell you is, Ellen Wrench is a is an, a sick individual. He really is a sick individual. And frankly, when, anytime when this is mentioned with him, he gets extremely upset and starts breaking things and threatening to break other people's uh, bones and things of this nature. So, I try to say as little as possible on this type of scenario here. Uh, however, I did advise you to speak to this Brent Alden character because he apparently knows quite a bit about this yeah. scenario. But the thing is that uh, let's put it this way: I don't, I, you know, I, he's capable of doing it. Whether he actually did it or not, only you know God and and uh, uh, Ellen Wrench know for sure. But now, what what is your association with this person? Are you a friend of this person? You, you play music. I play it? guitar in his band. Yeah. And, uh, w I mean, uh, would you play guitar in the band of someone who uh, you suspected <laughs> of being a, a involved in first-degree murder? Um, conceivably, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would. Uh, I do! <laughs> Let's put it that way, I am! So you do suspect him of, of killing uh, uh, Kurt Cobain? Uh, I, th I think it ought to be investigated a little more thoroughly by the authorities. I understand that the Seattle police did investigate the uh, killing and ruled it a suicide. Right. But um, I think it could be warranted for people to look at the whole thing. In fact, myself and this individual over here, the new drummer and the mentors, H. Davis, uh, as we call him, uh, he and I were thinking how suspicious as it was that the guy supposedly was on heroin and then theoretically killed himself. Now if you think about it for a second, heroin junkies, that's a natural euphoric and it is very unusual that somebody would kill themselves, especially the way he did, theoretically on uh, an overdose of heroin. Very peculiar. So there are some inconsistencies with the situation. Right, but I mean how does your uh, friend uh, or your bandmate uh, Alan Wrench play into this? I mean I've just seen uh Basically, what I've seen is apparently an individual who's in the punk rock thing trying to promote himself by floating a rumor that says, I killed Kurt Cobain. But now I'm speaking to someone who has a direct association with him. That's with correct. His band, right. And you yourself have your suspicions. Yeah. And, but what's that based on? Was he in Seattle at the time that uh, Cobain died? I didn't know. I, 
frankly, that was so long ago. I don't really, you know, I would don't pay attention to the guy on a daily basis. We typically only get together when we're doing gigs, which is about once or twice a month or something like that. Now, he, I, you know, when the Cobain, or as I like to call him, No Brain, uh, offed himself or was ostensibly either murdered or uh, was a natural cause of the situation, whatever actually happened. Um, uh, I'm not really sure where Alan was, to be specific, but... Um, but it is your As you know, Duce was involved heavily with this thing. In fact, uh, I believe I have up on the wall here a copy of the National Enquirer. What did I do with that? Where Duce, uh, yeah, right here. See this here? Uh, oh, that's Rockstar's baby is born a junkie. Where's the one with Duce? Anyway, he was in the Enquirer, as you know, and passed a, uh, a lie detector test that he had been approached by uh, a certain woman. Um, to whom he knows <laughs> needs to be Courtney Love. In fact, I spoke to the lie detector expert yesterday, Doctor Gelb. Yeah, that's correct. And what did Doctor? Where Where does Doctor Gelb practice? Uh, out of Los Angeles. Is he a legitimate guy or is he full of bullshit? He's one of the top uh, polygraph examiners in the <laughs> right. And now El Duce had. A, uh, now this is curious because I've never ever met anybody that actually spoke to Gelb. Now El Duce, as you know, had a severe alcohol problem. Was Doctor Gelb? Aware of that? Yeah, I discussed that with him. And would that tend to interfere at all on the lie detector? Absolutely not. <laughs> There's no way. This is just uh, yeah. In fact, the example he gave was that uh, there have been tests done on people who are on heroin, and uh, even uh, a powerful suppressant such oh, as okay. that. Oh, okay. Here's the here's the article. Kurt <coughs> Love we'll offered me fifty grand to kill Kurt Cobain. See right there. Right. Rizzled punk rocker shocking claim. Right there. Yeah, that's uh, the examiner of the globe. I One think. of those, yeah. yes. So, see what the situation is. Alan Wrench lives in Riverside. Has is actually a Riverside native. Uh, as you know, both myself and Duce had uh, relocated to Riverside from uh, originally Seattle, of course, but we've been living in L.A. for many years, and uh, we got the gained the acquaintance of this Alan Wrench character, who is somewhat of a local legend and. Uh, uh, a kickboxer. He actually does training for the Riverside Police Department, Riverside Sheriff's Association on self-defense techniques and uh, has been known on occasion to uh, impersonate an officer and things of that nature. And um, he's very hung up in um, unusual individual in terms of being involved with law enforcement activities, paramilitary training, uh, uh, street fighting, things of that nature. And uh, along with his other interests that he has. So we get, gained the acquaintance of him, and he was quite friendly with Dooch and myself and uh, spent a lot of time with Dooch. And so Dooch was supposedly approached uh, in this regard, and as Dr. Gelb has now stated. And, um, you know, there's something involving these people, but to tell you the truth, I really, you know, I'm not really sure one way or the other, but the uh, whole thing is a bit fishy. Well, do I understand uh, correctly that he's been kind of strutting around saying, guess who I am, I'm the guy who pulled the trigger on Cobain? <laughs> Let's put it this way, it is mentioned around him. I do believe that in some moments when he's been less than completely coherent, he has said things of that nature. But, uh, you know, it's not like he's got a billboard up or nothing that says that. Now, as far as the website goes, you know, I'm not quite sure if that's completely his work or the work of some some other associates of his or really exactly what goes on. I know he has some creative input into this thing. But, but the creative input on the website is it promotes his band, Kill Alan Wrench. Correct. And then the idea is the reason that you want to kill Alan Wrench is that he killed Kurt Cobain. Well, I, you know, actually, I never made that connection. It's interesting you, you mentioned that uh, as far as why you should kill Alan Wrench. I, I just think that that was up there. Frankly, but well before, I believe he formed the band before Cobain was murdered. So I'm not sure that there's an uh, ironclad connection between the name and what what he may have done. But in any case, the, the website promotes the band. I think it has upcoming gigs and stuff like That's that. Correct, yeah, band. absolutely. Yeah. And then at the same time, it has testimonials from people who claim to live in the Riverside area who say things like, you know, uh, Alan Wrench on such and such an occasion at such and such a bar 
was talking loudly about how, yeah, I did it, I killed him, that kind of thing. Now, that I couldn't say, because like I told you last night on the phone, I, I haven't looked at that page for quite a while, so I'm not... I'll take your word for it that it says that. And, um... You know, that's, that's really why I think somebody ought to look into it, you know, a little bit further to see, see what was going on, but now if, you if know, with this thing. If he's your friend, uh, or you're... He's an acquaintance. He's <laughs> in your, you're in his band, Kill Alan. Right. 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 So, I mean, are you actually saying that, uh, that someone, like, for instance, the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, should... I don't think I don't believe Alan that Wrench character. I don't think they would be the appropriate law enforcement agency to r research it for a couple different reasons. Number one, uh, it's not within their jurisdiction any of these crimes that he theoretically uh, uh, perpetrated. Um, and number two, he has an association with the Riverside. And Sheriff? number two, there is a strong conflict of interest where he is associated with uh, with them to some degree. So you're under the impression that he is a paid consultant on matters of hand-to-hand -hand combat training, that sort of thing. Right. Do you think that that's actually true? What is? That he has that close association with the police? Uh, I'm not sure, but he's told me he, he does. Yeah. So he's sort of in with the police, kind of into this paramilitary culture, and he may be uh, strutting around Riverside saying, look at me, I'm the guy who whacked Kurt Cobain. Right. Yeah. Now, if he finds out that you're encouraging me to uh, encourage investigatory authorities to look into this, uh, are you going to be on his uh, short list of uh, people to whack also? <laughs> let's, let's hope not. You, you did say that he's capable of this sort of thing. I think he's capable of it, yeah. Now, presumably you've never seen him actually kill anyone. No, but, of course uh, not. No. Have you seen him uh, engage in uh, acts of cruelty? I've seen him engage in, in, in street fighting, but only when provoked, to tell you the truth. So whatever I have seen him done was completely justified self-defense type activity, but was extremely brutal in terms of... Um, uh, he's very talented in terms of street fighting. Mm -hmm. And is, is he known for uh, doing dirty deeds done dirt cheap? Uh, no, no, I wouldn't say so. But, you know, I I just like to play rock and roll, so I don't really associate with the criminal element to that degree. Right, except that you're in his band, of course. <laughs> well, yeah. But, uh, you know, I don't know that he's really... I'll get, as In my court, as in America, you're, you're innocent until proven guilty. So I, I take that literally. I, I treat him as he's innocent until he's proven guilty. Yeah. You know. But does he frighten you at all? I mean, if I knew that someone was a killer, especially like a paid killer, uh, I'd be very intimidated by that person. Uh, well, as, as you know, I've had many years in the music business and been around the block several hundred times, and... Frankly, I've come across some more extremely uh, scarier characters that, uh, that you know. Um, see, Alan Wrench prefers his 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 methods of working are more uh, street fighting and uh, using his fists and his feet and things. He's not a although he does handle weapons. He's not a a big. Uh, He's not wielding uh, pistols and things like that, you know. So those are the people that, real, frankly, are much more scary than people that carry pistols and things because they can go off on a moment's notice and uh, start popping caps. You know, the whole rap thing and the Snoop Doggy Dog and all that. So, sure. but I think you know, having dealt with some of that element over the years, the, the gun freaks, I'll say that, yeah, okay, there's some concern there, but it's not, frankly, of the level of the gun freak that's out there. Oh, even in terms of danger to you? Yeah, 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 in terms of immediate danger. But in terms of whether he's dangerous enough to have killed Kurt Cobain, uh, I think at the time of his death in his autopsy report, uh, Cobain is uh, reported as having weighed 138 pounds. This Alan Wrench would not have much of a problem with a 138 pounder. <laughs> well, that guy was a total wimp, you know. Uh, so, no, this what we're talking about, Alan Wrench is about six feet tall, about 200 pounds, and uh, he is a world-class judo uh, individual. And he, he engages in these uh, wrestle-to-the-death type uh, tournaments? No, right? well, it's, it's the no-holds-barred cage fighting stuff. Yeah. 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 He does that kind of thing. But it's not, 
it's not like I don't think it's to it's certainly not to the death. I mean, nobody gets killed in these things, to my knowledge. But in any case, if if Kurt Cobain had dropped out of uh, the wrestling squad at Weatherwax High School <laughs> in Aberdeen at age fifteen. Alan Wrench would have no problem taking care of him. Well, certainly Alan Wrench was would be completely capable of uh, of this type of activity. You mean morally and ethically, also? Um, you know, like, like I said, I've never really, I can't say that I, uh, you know, have absolute knowledge one way or the other. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but if he did do it, I believe he should be punished. And there is reason to believe that perhaps he did do it. There is certain rumors floating around that, uh, uh, you know, maybe deserve a second look, but uh, I can't, you know, uh, wouldn't, I never paid much attention to the whole situation in terms of that type of thing to really be conclusively uh, render an opinion one way or the other. Don't Great. trip over that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Finding legitimacy with anyone else, right. it's like, how, uh, how much are people going to believe what he has to say now if, in fact, he was bullshitting them? Right. So is that Mr. Wrench? Yeah, that's him there. Uh, appears to be quite a showman. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's a poster in here if you want to get a shot at that. I don't know how good that will come out. But. Oh, wow. Yeah. Be careful, there's some big-ass spiders in here. <laughs> so are you in that photo? Yeah, that's me. On the left. Yeah. No disguising it, you're an associate, Steve. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what's your th your theory at the moment? What do you think happened with this this uh, situation? Um, I think uh, the LDJ story is, you know, when I first heard of this, I heard of this in 95, you know? I mean, yeah. I must have been one of the first persons to hear about this, you mm -hmm. know? And uh, basically... Um, I figured, you know, come on, El Duce, the weirdest guy in the world. Now, had you ever seen El Duce play in a no, band before? I heard the term know? rape rock, and I thought, <laughs> yeah. well, you know. Yeah. And and it immediately occurred to me that uh, what was going on is that Courtney wanted to set up that if his story was true, and, yes. he, and, and initially, who even could guess whether it was true or not, but uh -huh. if his story was true, then it was, it was just a setup to create somebody... Um, in the background of this thing who would be the least credible witness you could possibly ever find, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because think about it, I if a rumor starts, the first question is, well, who's floating this rumor? Who's starting it? Right. And if it's rape rocker El Duce... <laughs> right. Come on. I mean, what do you think, Barbara Walters is going to come out to <laughs> interview So you El think it was, he was there as a smokescreen, is what you're saying? To cover up, like, distract people from... Something that else was going on? That's that's your theory. Okay. Well, that initially occurred to me, and that's and what you thought initially. That's further emphasized by the fact that uh, people like El Duce, and they say that you know, unlike your paramilitary friend here, um, <laughs> El Duce was kind of a mild-mannered guy off stage. It's hard to believe he would. Yeah, I mean, frankly, you'd have to be crazy to want to hire him to do it because he was so drunk all the time. You know, it's like be like hiring Mr. Magoo to like scale Mount Everest. I mean, if he did it, it would be a miracle. Yeah, this Alan Wrench So that's guys. the thing that really doesn't pan out with the whole deal as far as I'm... Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I used to watch that show with F. Lee Bailey about the polygraph. Have you ever seen that? Uh, you know the attorney F. F. Lee Bailey? They actually used to have a show where he did polygraph tests every week on people. And I'm yeah, not sure I've right. totally gone along with this polygraph thing, to be honest with you. Anyway. But this, uh, this Alan Wrench character, uh, from what I've heard and what I'm seeing now, seems to have an intensity uh, about him that uh, good old happy boozer uh, El Duce lacked. Well... Is he this intense in real life as well as on stage? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's no... 
he he likes his drugs and he likes his booze, but he's not he's not um, in the same category as a uh, douche in terms of douche was already. See, when douche started out, he was pretty vigorous, but over the years, as the the booze you know slowed him down to the point where he was pretty much incapacitated. Where Ranch is still, you know, he's considerably younger than myself and Dooch. So he's, uh, the testosterone level is still counteracting the, uh, uh the, uh, depressants. Yeah, the testosterone level seems to be extremely high. Uh. <laughs> right. So he's... <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> There's nobody else out here in Riverside that, you know, to play with, so <laughs> I guess I've got, you know, what a crazy world it is when you've got to rock with the guy that, uh, you know, uh, is implicated in this kind of situation. <laughs> yeah, well, but like you said... Well, that's why my tax dollars, I do pay a lot of tax dollars, so let's, you know, tell them to use them, you know. Let's oh, get to the bottom of this. You're saying the guy should be investigated. Well, by somebody. Yeah. It looks like you're doing a good job of it. Yeah, I'm not exactly the slap the cuffs on him and <laughs> send him away for 30 years kind of guy, though. Well, the way I look at it is, number one, I really, frankly, didn't like Nirvana. And, uh, so whatever. He was, he might have been the voice of the generation, but it, uh, that wasn't my generation. So, it's too bad, but... I think his band stunk. The yeah, unplug stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's really, like. really bad. I like the Foo Fighters a lot better than I like Nirvana. I think Dave Grohl should. If somebody killed Dave Grohl, I'd really be upset. <laughs> All right, that Chris guy. At least he plays drums. Yeah, at least he plays <laughs> drums and a guitar player, like H. Davis over here can do that. But um, you know, in this case. So he's really one of these uh, paramilitary type guys that uh, just like is thinking about kicking ass and cutting throats all the time, huh? I mean, yeah. I've just known so many of those people. Uh, you know, where I grew up was just full of those kind of people. And well, yeah, he subscribes to Soldier of Fortune magazine. He subscribes to American Rifleman. You know, he uh, he likes to watch movies like uh, uh, Wild Geese and stuff like that. And uh, and what's yeah. his uh, what's vigilante card carrying NRA? You know this kind of thing. He, he loves, you know, like I was saying. I really don't like weapons, and uh, although he doesn't carry a pistol, he's got a couple of uh, firearms of various natures, and uh, it is, you know, whenever I go over his pad, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm hoping he is not bringing out the the iron to clean them, or you know, he's never brandished it at me in the terms of like what that guy. Uh, uh, was doing uh, M and M, you know, brandishing the weapon. But uh, yeah, it's an unsettling feeling when somebody's got that kind of uh, firepower, and then they're all fucked up and stuff. You know what I mean? Well, you know, like you talk about him maybe being like a hardcore right wing NRA card carrying type. No, he's not political. There's no. There's no. You know what I'm saying is. Yeah, there's no. It's not like a matter of him like being paramilitary. Might have been the wrong. Term and I'm not trying to imply that he's involved Marshall with the, the right r with the right wing in terms of you know blowing up federal building type thing. Yeah. Or anything. but no, Steve. What I'm, what I'm trying to ask is, what's this guy's deal with Satan? Um. Well, he he's uh, you know got these crosses and horns and and all of that, but, you know, that's a common heavy metal thing. Now, I, I can't say I've really seen him doing rituals with candles or any of that kind of stuff. But uh, he's, uh, he's, 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 he has corresponded with the Night Stalker, and there is some apparent tie-in with him and the Night Stalker. You mean Richard Ramirez, exactly. the serial killer? Yeah. Uh -huh. You mean he writes letters to Ramirez in prison? Uh, yeah, there's been some correspondence between Richard Ramirez and Alan Ridge. Huh. Let's put it that way. So they're pen pals, is what you're saying. Uh, I don't know if I put it in that category, but what happened was there was a uh, the acquaintance I came across that that is a regular correspondee with Alan Wrench, and uh, then I turned him on to the Kill Alan Wrench band, um, and he started talking to Alan, and apparently Ramirez 
sent Alan a letter or something. I don't really don't know what the whole scoop is, but there was some dealings with them, as you can. Uh, I believe Alan is uh, would like to use that as a promotional activity at the bare minimum. Oh, the Satan thing and the, the Satan German thing and the you know Night Stalker and ACDC and you know he's kind of got those horns like uh, like uh, the guy in that ACDC cover hat. You know what I mean? You know, Highway yeah. to Hell album. They don't wear them on stage though, ACDC. No, but I think he got the idea maybe by this whole Night Stalker thing. And, uh, while you yourself seem to have a number of Miles Davis uh, sides uh, in your collection. Huh? <laughs> right. Do you care for Miles Davis? Or yeah? Oh, yeah, sure. I saw him play once. Another oh, did you really? Another violent guy, Miles Davis. He's a violent dude? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, was, he used to uh, stand outside the club all dressed up and mm -hmm. wait for him, wait for somebody to like try to pick up on him as a fag so he could punch him out. He had a fur coat he used for that purpose. Huh. No shit. Yeah, he was, he was a cruel dude. He liked to fuck people up. <laughs> Whoa. Well, he was a boxer, Miles Davis, you know. He would do I the boxing. Oh, yeah. 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 He was doing the boxing thing. You know, even at, after he became, you know, who he was, you know. So, Steve, is uh, Alan Wrench, um, I mean, is he t entirely self-promoted, or is he pursuing, like, major label? Uh, no, there he's got this backing with this, this some... Some rich sluts in Beverly Hills that have this uh, uh, double vision thing going. Really? Yeah. Some rich sluts in Beverly they Hills. They have a connection. Have it's uh, the Gloman and Globus company. <laughs> yeah. I'm you know about them? Globus, yeah. Okay. They're, it's it's the one of the daughters of one of those those dudes in there, like Ira Globus or something like that. Yeah. It's, it has to do with her. She got a bunch of financing from Gloman and Globus or whatever the hell. The ones that do those kind of cheesy Chuck Norris and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, so she was, she had like a crack problem and was copping with Alan, and he got somehow caught caught up in this thing, and and uh, so she, you know, they have a distribution network and all of that, somewhat going, but it's uh, you know, it's a little limited because it's a uh, it's a uh, it's re actually more of a movie company than a record company. It's one of those deals, so. But in other words, uh, he's more or less a major label artist, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's uh, like I said, you know, it's one of those specialty labels from a movie thing. Hence, why they call it a mo motion picture thing. And uh, so, but you know, it's obviously expensive to produce all that type of uh, promotional junk. Yeah. Well, the uh, the people you meet, uh, cop and dope, huh? <laughs> uh, that's what I was told was the story. Yeah. Yeah. How they got acquainted. It was a crack house over there and. In Hollywood or something like that where these type yeah. of uh, what, what you would call Euro trash <laughs> or uh, you know Southern California uh, nouveau riche types would go over there and get fucked up mm -hmm. got one up on them but yeah we used to as, as you may be aware we, we came from Seattle originally and played a lot of uh, shows up there so this is the official. Uh, I mean, this is this is produced by his distribution company and all that, right? Right. And the, they actually have this. I'll blow away Kurt Cobain for fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> and then they're appropriating an image of that's obviously El Duce, right? Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah, the whole situation is is convoluted because of these. The company, and they're perhaps the ones behind the webpage trying to exploit it. There's also this thing being circulated around. I don't know that you've seen this. Oh, uh, Informant Magazine. What was your name again? Richard Lee. Richard Lee. Yes, he is. He's, he's taping me talking to you. No, no, your audio is not on the tape. Here, let me let me put them on. Hold on a second. Get over here with that, honey. Bring it over. Hold on, let me put them on. You want me to film you, dude? I can do it. Okay. Hi, uh, you're Alan Wrench. Okay, hi. Uh, this is Richard Lee from Seattle. 
And um, I don't know whether uh, you've heard of me or not, but uh, you know my name was mentioned briefly in that High Times article, for instance. So, okay. Well, you know, I have uh, was there when uh, Cobain's body turned up, you know, that day at, at his home. And uh, I've continued with a documentary series uh, for the last six years. And so the documentary series uh, is called uh, Kurt Cobain Was Murdered. And um, I understand that uh, there's this persistent rumor. I've just been looking at an informant magazine, which I understand is a local thing here. Uh, and in fact, I think your, your band buys uh, advertising in the magazine. Is Brent Alden the, the author of the article? So now you're saying that, that, that Brent Alden has something to do with what? Just misrepresenting you in the, in the magazine? Okay, you're in Florida with a band called what? The Janitor. Could you spell that for me? Okay. Genital torture. So it starts with G E N, like genital torture. Yeah. Okay. So the first week of April of 1994, you were in Florida. And where were you? Maybe the week before that. Uh huh. And now. But you're convinced that you were you were in Florida at the opposite end of the country at the time that Cobain's body turned up. Hmm. And um, so let me ask you directly: Did you kill Kurt Cobain? Okay, why are you dogged by rumors? So, El Duce, you know, was propositioned by Courtney Love, apparently. And he passed a lie detector and all that. And were you ever propositioned by Courtney Love to commit any illegal act? You've never met Courtney Love in your life. And there's no proof that you've ever met Courtney Love in your life. Right. Okay, so uh, you're giving a definitive, I did not kill Kurt Cobain. And Alan Wrench is your uh, stage name for how long? Alan Wrench is your name. That's the... Richard Allen Wrench. I see. And so Richard Allen Wrench did not kill Kurt Cobain. You did not kill El Duce? So you had an argument shortly before El Duce died. Why did he name you? So your understanding is that, that El Duce may have named you as like a part of a, a rumor that, that maybe you had gone through with uh, the killing of Kurt Cobain. Well, I can understand that. I guess he was filmed right in this uh, backyard here uh, by that uh, Broomfield guy, and he said he knew who killed Kurt Cobain. And my understanding is... But did, did he have any realistic basis for uh, assuming that you may have been involved in the murder of Kurt Cobain? Nothing that anyone can prove. Well, have, you're, you're saying at this point you've never gone around claiming to have been the uh, assailant or the assassin of Kurt Cobain. 
And so did El Duce hear secondhand or third hand, uh, you know, that Alan Wrench killed Kurt Cobain, or did he hear something of the sort from you? You weren't present at the moment, you mean during those weeks or months? Right. But, but Mr. Wrench, just let me ask you real specifically one more time, where in the world would El Duce, who was obviously involved in this thing with Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love, where would he get the idea that uh, it was it was somehow reasonable to draw your name into this as as possibly the person who did the crime? You have no idea whatsoever. But so. But at that time, in 1997, which is when he filmed that interview, was the rumor already floating that, that uh, Richard Allen Wrench killed Kurt Cobain? So he talks to this. But so he talks to this Alden guy, and you get the idea that he got the um, whole idea about possibly you were the assassin from uh, Mr. Alden. Well, from what you're saying, it appears that this Alden character spoke to El Duce days before he spoke to Broomfield, and you're, you're conveying the idea that somehow Alden may have given Duce the idea that you were involved. Right. But so you don't feel that, that prior to early 1997 that there was a rumor around Riverside or anywhere else that you were involved in Cobain's murder? So you feel that it sprung up right around March or April of 97? But now, of course, he died only days later, so it is a strange series. Where did you pick him up? For, from where? Oh, I see. So you picked him up and you took him over to the Stater Brothers and that liquor store. Did he get food or did he get liquor? Okay. And then, um, as I understand the story as I've heard it, you just dropped him off there and said you can just walk home, basically. Okay, was that, uh, I mean, is that was some sort of a retribution or punishment for uh, floating these rumors? or? Well, Mr. Wrench, though, you... Well, I know, but you're, you're not denying the fact that you killed Al Duce. That's disturbing. You're not denying... Okay, but you've denied that you killed Kurt Cobain. Okay, you did not kill Al Duce. But you were with him in the minutes prior to his death, apparently. Five minutes before he died, yeah. And uh, are you aware of, uh, you were not a witness to his death? Do you know of any witness to his death? 
Oh, what do you mean? Really, he's not doing it. I just get a list in the papers. Right. It's not the joke. Right. So, in other words, um, you feel that he died within minutes of you dropping him off. I guess 810 is what was in the newspapers. Right. But it, what you feel that it was around 8 p.m. that you dropped him off, and then around 8 p.m. is when he died? You know, you don't wear a watch, yeah. Okay, so um, if anyone places you at or near the scene uh, of El Duce's death, that's correct. However, you did not kill El Duce. Yeah, because I mean the thing that that sprung up, uh, you know, in the wake of this interview and his sudden death afterwards is, well, isn't that strange? If somebody knew that he was moving forward in, in such a way that would get worldwide attention, saying, uh, you know, I know uh, the Courtney Love propositioned me to kill Kurt Cobain, and I have a suspicion about this guy Alan Wrench, and then days later, after doing the interview, you have an argument with him. You're with him right before he dies and he obviously dies a rather grisly death. The question is, if there aren't any witnesses, isn't it possible someone could have hit El Duce over the head and put him on those train tracks? Right. But uh, we're, we're not having a conversation about space aliens here. We're having a, a conversation about you being there in, in the moments before his death and obviously having a significant uh, issue with him. I mean, haven't you been concerned, for instance, that these rumors, uh, even if they're completely uh, fabricated, completely untrue, would, would harm your career in show business? With, with time, the rumors will fade away? Well, except that you were with El Duce in the moments before his death. Uh, right, but he, he wasn't... Uh, so Steve, you and Steve and El Duce were all present at this site, in, in at this home. Right, but in other words... No, but you were the one who was driving the truck or the car that drove him away, right? Well, is that specifically what he was doing? So he went to get a beer. So are you aware, did he go to the Stater Brothers Groceries or the liquor store? Uh -huh. So, um... LDJ is dead, and people uh, around the world who are concerned with the Kurt Cobain uh, murder are looking at his death as being very strangely coincidental with the timing of that interview with uh, Nick Broomfield and now you are the person in and around this event as the person who apparently he believed to be the killer of Kurt Cobain uh, and you were with Al Duce in the moments before his death but you feel that this rumor will just fade away You're just going to slip away. No one can do anything to you at all. But do you do you feel that it would be appropriate for some authority like um, the Riverside uh, Sheriff uh, or uh, possibly the FBI to investigate uh, your background and determine whether or not, for instance, uh, you were the killer of El Duce? Well, they could look at the fact that you were with him in the moments before his death, and you had a very significant dispute with him based on the idea that he was getting ready to, to tell someone, uh, the BBC or someone, that you killed Kurt Cobain. The important thing is that he was stopped before he was able to. You said the important thing that is that he was stopped before he was able to. Well, that's the important thing to you. Thing from some, uh, some some, some 
Well, the thing is, people have have been uh, prosecuted for uh, first degree homicide uh, f with less to go on initially. I mean, in terms of opening up an investigation, the idea that this guy was maybe telling media uh, that uh, you were Cobain's killer and that he died more or less within moments of your being in his presence days later, it's kind of hard to get around, you know? Yeah. And uh, as, you've, uh, as you've obviously said, you've never killed anybody. But you, you are now saying that you are not the killer of El Duce. You did not kill Eldon Hoke. That's correct. Right. All right, and so... Um, if you were to be contacted, for instance, by the FBI or the Riverside uh, County Sheriff's Department, you would be able to tell them that uh, you're completely innocent. Uh, do you have a close association with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department? Have you ever been a paid consultant uh, by them uh, in any way? So you've you've coached the right. So you're kind of a black belt kind of expert. You won the U.S. Nationals in judo. What year was that? Uh, heavyweight Masters, huh? And so you have actually been a paid consultant and and uh, been employed by the Riverside County Sheriff's Department to do that uh, hand to hand combat. There's no record whatsoever. I see. So, uh, but in, in other words, you were paid, but it was off the books. So are you close friends with uh, people on the Riverside uh, Sheriff's Department? Right. But so, Mr. Rancher, are you saying that you, um, say, spend time in the company with personnel from the Sheriff's Department more than once a month? Oh, you're not doing that any longer. So, but at one time you did this on a fairly regular basis. So LAPD, San Bernardino, Riverside PD, Riverside Sheriffs. You're associated with all of those law enforcement agencies? You've met and worked out with people from those departments. Right. Yeah, I guess on the judo circuit, you're uh, practically famous, huh? Yeah. So, um, uh, Mr. Wrench, what, what's the deal with Satan? Is that... Um, are you a devotee of, of uh, the Horned Beast, or is that just a showbiz thing? You don't talk about your religious beliefs, but at the same time, you kind of strut around on stage with the horns and, uh, and a, a pentagraph, and, uh, well, uh, a pentagram, rather. So, I mean, if anyone looked at photos of you, they would say this guy is some kind of Satan rocker. But uh, so, you mean, when you say you, you don't discuss your religious beliefs, you're saying that uh, questions about Satanism actually intrude into you? Right. But do you yourself worship Satan? You don't want to comment about that?
Here's um, Eldon Hoax examination. Hmm. And here, as an example, is the reaction to the comparison question compared to the relevant question, did Courtney Love ask you to kill Co Co Kurt Cobain? He said yes, and you see there's less reaction here than to the comparison question, indicating that he's being truthful on this question, and he's more uncomfortable with the comparison question. You see that big reaction here, here, and here, compared to this, this, and this? Is there a uh, specific form of the comparison question that you always go to? or It's always different based on the background of the person. That's what you're developing in this pre-test interview, which would be the, com the right kind of comparison questions. But is it often as simple as, is your name uh, no. Eleanor no. Roosevelt? No. Mm. No, it's pretty much sophisticated, much more sophisticated than that. But in fact, is it uh, the case that you ask someone uh, a baseline question or a comparison question which is um, guaranteed to... Here's a comparison I question. Uh -huh. Here's the relevant question. Baseline arousal, more reactivity than this, more reactivity than this, more reaction on the comparison question, therefore he's being called truthful on the relevant question.